Hi everyone, welcome back to Spring Boot to Essentials by Dev Dojo. And uh, in this video, we are going to set up a database connection. So let's see how we can use Spring Data JPA to connect to a MySQL database. So the installation of MySQL is uh, out of the scope of this training, but I'm going to show you how we can create a Docker Compose file for it. So I'm going to use a uh, Docker just because it's uh, simple. And uh, if you have MySQL or any other database already installed, you just need to change the configurations a little bit. And I'm not going to use H2 database, in-memory database, because I want to get uh, as close as possible from what you're going to see um, outside uh, this training. So for the Docker Compose, let's uh, just create a new file here. Let's call this file docker-compose.yaml. And I do have the the Docker running here, make sure that you do have Docker. And again, if you don't have uh, Docker, you can install MySQL or any other database natively. So you just add the version, the version, let's use 3.1. And um, uh, spelling here. We add here services and I'm going to use here database my sql i'm going to use the image my sql i'm going with the latest one let's give a container name let's call this uh, spring boot 2 underscore my sql container and then we can set some environment variables let's uh, set my sql root password the safest password in the world for database and then we go here into parts. Let's expose from 306 from the container. I would like this to be mapped to 3306 on my computer. So I'll be able to access it. And um, this one should be under the R right here. Let's make sure that I have this. We all love Python, right? And then uh, let's create the volumes. And then again, make sure this volume is here. Let's give any name, the dojo data, because it's going to use the name of the, the context of the service here, plus this one. And uh, then map to this location. And uh, make sure that you have here the mapping as well, the same name as you have here. Well, let's see if this is working. You can open the terminal and inside the root level, make sure you run uh, docker-compose up. So it will pull the latest image. So while it's uh, pulling here, let's go into the pond.xml. So, or it was supposed to download. Let's uh, leave it there for now. Okay, so we do have a problem here. So it looks like the DB image MySQL is not working. Do -do 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 -do. Handshake timeout. Well, let's see again. Okay, I will figure this out later. Let's uh, go here to the dependencies. So we are using Spring and we do have the starters. And the starter for this dependency is the Spring Boot Starter, Spring Dash Boot Dash Starter Data GPA from group ID org spring framework dot boot. Okay, only by adding this, uh, we do have now the dependencies required to connect to the database. But since we, we are using MySQL, we do have to set the connector as well. So just add another dependency here. Uh, dependency, MySQL, connector Java from MySQL. Oops, not this one. MySQL, no, actually it's this one. Okay, so... Looks like this is everything that we had to do. 
to get the dependencies my docker is uh, failing me only because i'm recording this video otherwise it would work so while this is uh, still being downloaded i have to figure this out later i'm going to the application.yaml so we do have now the, the dependency we don't have uh, mysql still running but we do have the dependency we just need to set the configuration to connect to a database so let's do this by setting up spring and then we have data source and you can go all the way to url so jdbc mysql and localhost the port that we are um, exposing 3306 and then the database that we are going to create anime and to avoid some weird warnings just use as sl false of course not production ready but just for this training um username spring data source uh, username let's add here root and then password let's also add root so this is everything that we defined here by default the username is root and the password we are giving up there and um, well, we can set the ddl mm, let's set it here jpa hibernate ddl and we would like to update the schema if necessary okay so we do have all the configuration that we need this service here is not available uh, i'm gonna pause this video wait a little bit and then i'm gonna try again so see you in a bit okay so it was just a matter of waiting a little bit so while we are downloading now the the service it will start automatically um let's go back to our domain and let's make sure that everything it's actually working let's do a couple of changes here so the first change is that we need to make this an entity and by doing this we have two problems first we don't have the default constructor with no args constructor as you can see the her right here so we just add no args constructor second one the id so we do need uh, to set an id we just add one here called at id from javax uh dot persistence and then we add the generated value and we use the strategy well technically we could use uh, any one of the available options i'm going with a identity so this uh will avoid creating the the hibernate schema so now we do have here the databases uh, available on uh, intellij ultimate if you don't have intellij ultimate you can use the workbench or any other tool to connect your database so i will just click on this plus sign and then i will go to my sql and then i will set up here user root and the password root and then i will test connection okay looks like we do have the connection for the lazy version we are going to apply okay and now we need to define the schema we don't have a schema if we go back to the application.yaml we said the schema would be called anime so we can just uh, right click open console we do have uh, internal console on intellij and here we say uh, create database anime and then you execute we have one row if we check here we do have one schema so how do we know if your application is actually connecting by starting our application we will see if we have a table inside of this schema so the application started and we refresh the schema and we do have the table that we are looking for so we do have the connection now um, i think that's enough information for one video let's continue in the next one so i see you there bye